Okay, so I'm gonna come this side so I can get the light. Might have a redfish already. Not even light yet. We shall see. You might have one on the other one as well. Yeah, oh maybe I'm over it. Oh maybe. What you got? I saw the bite, but it's not running. No, it's not going sideways or anything. Normally, when they come straight in, it's either a whiting or something like that. But it was a good bite, and I placed that out right on that um, third bar out there. Oh, it's you. Mine's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Nick's walking out as far as he can. And he's hitting that other bar out there. And just over that other bar. You got to have long rods. You got to have some aerodynamic baits. That's doing great. What's that? Yeah, I saw it land right over it. The, uh, Hold on. I was reading somewhere the other day, someone was talking about rigs for pond fishing, and they were saying a soft rod, nine foot, total bullshit. You need a long casting rod so you can reach out. Now, if you've got a long rod that, you try, that can throw a long distance, you can also cast short. But with a short rod, you can't cast long. There you go. <laughs> That needs to get put in more. Now we use a fish line to protect Let me see. the shrimp. Now any of these uh, baits you've got, I've even seen where you're instructed to go through them twice. That is a good idea if you're just using them. But if you're using shrimp, you only want to go through the shrimp once and the uh, fish, bite. fish bite once. And then what you do is you bond the shrimp to the fish bite and they last ages and you'll catch them. See the fish bite is supporting them. That's awesome. And then if you put a second one you got a little sandwich. Yeah. It's really protective. Like, yeah, <laughs> I just do the one and I've noticed that they stay on real well. Awesome. Did you care? What I'm doing is I'm showing how we use a bait, how we use a fish bite to protect your shrimp. Now any of these 
uh, baits you've got I've even seen where you're instructed to go through them twice that is a good idea if you're just using them but if you're using shrimp you only want to go through the shrimp once and the uh, fish, bite. fish bite once and then what you do is you bond the shrimp to the fish bite and they last ages and you'll catch them. see the fish bite is supporting that's them. awesome and then if you put a second one you got a little sandwich yeah they normally I, yeah <laughs> i just do the one and i've noticed that they stay on real well awesome Can you bait up this other one? Right, folks just want to show you where we're fishing and why you can see this larger gut out here quite wide it narrows up and we have a little suck out right right there <laughs> we have a suck out right there just to the right of the truck and Nick is throwing over that bar out here let me see if I can get it there you go over that bar that's where we're getting the pompano and so that's why we're here this first gut is very narrow you can actually walk out pretty easily to the other bar if you need to he's not needing to at this time but he could if you needed to so that's why we're fishing here and we are catching pompano so see now when you cast everything's streamlined till it hits oh. Brenda, could you put one there for me? It's 
So what I'm doing, I'm putting them baits on that furthest bar. So I'm walking out a bit into the surf to give me an advantage. And that's where I'm picking them pomp up. Saw someone the other day was talking about ideal rods for pompano. And they were saying like nine foot, that's total bullshit. You need to be able to reach out as far as you can for Texas pomp. Might be different somewhere else, but here baby, you need to be out a bit. And if you can get it out there, you normally stand a good chance of getting it. Perfect, right on that bar. So what we've got is good spread. We've got three rods out, spread out. We're going to look and see which one goes off and then we move to that area. So we've got a good 100 foot of beach covered. And once we start finding where they are for sure, then we're going to go after them more. Don't forget, set your drag, don't forget. Fourth time. Don't make this nick away from breakaway. I'm on the south side of the entrance about nine miles down. Now let me try and get this right. This is, I've been doing this, I keep buggering it up. We have a high tide of 242 this morning. We've got a low tide at 9.08, which is right now, and that's why we're getting ready to go, because I hate fish in slack water. Then we've got another high tide at 12.06, just after midday. That's when I'm gonna be thinking of coming back out, about two o'clock. And then we've got a true low tide this evening at 7.21. Now, if the weather doesn't get too bad, I'm going to come back out. Okay, we've had redfish oversize. That was like 29 inch. Water clarity's good. We've had three pom, plenty of whiting. So it's been worth coming out. It's been fun. Anyhow, the wind is building. It's dewy, so I know we've got some fronts coming in. Let me just check that. Uh, yeah, we've got some. Uh, fronts coming down, low pressures, that could push the wind north, put the bite off for a couple of days, so we need to be keeping an eye on. Water clarity is good though, good for pomp though. Driving, going to put that. Um, yeah, you're a great day, this is Nick away from Lake Lake. We've got a bike, go Brenda! Uh, 